Hello, my name is Alexis DeMott and I am currently a student at Teal College taking a course entitled Integrated Instructional Systems. I will be teaching a standard-based lesson in English based on the PA academic standards and integrating technology into my lesson. I hope you enjoy watching this video sample of my teaching. Thank you! Alright, so today we're going to learn about Hamlet's famous soliloquy starting off with to be or not to be. That is the question. So. Just to start off, we're going to test your background knowledge on Hamlet using the clickers. Just um, put the letter in. So what type of drama is Hamlet? All right, you all got it right. Good job. Hamlet is a tragedy. <laughs> Next question. Which of the following is not true in the play Hamlet? A. Hamlet is seeking revenge for his father's death. B. Hamlet faces an internal conflicts within himself. Or C. Hamlet is only interested in being with Ophelia. Okay, five. <laughs> C is the correct answer. And back at A. Hamlet is seeking revenge for his father's death. Because remember, this is a not true question. And that's kind of the premise of what Hamlet is about. All right, so true or false? True will be A, and false is B. So Hamlet experiences fits of madness. Okay, this one is actually kind of tricky, kind of tricked you a little bit, oh. intentionally, because it's debated when we talk about Hamlet, if Hamlet is really mad or not. So now we're going to start talking about to be or not to be. Does anyone, can anyone tell me what a soliloquy is? All right, that's okay. Definition is an act of speaking one's thoughts aloud when by oneself or regardless of any hearers, especially by a character in a play. Can anyone like give me that in their own words or an example? It's when someone is speaking out loud what they're thinking, whether anyone's listening or not. It's kind of for the audience. Mm -hmm. And feel free to write the definition in your own words on your packets. The slides are all. Okay, so before we read to be or not to be, here's a little bit of background knowledge more specific to that soliloquy. So some themes that, it's gonna, that are going to come up are the uncertainty of life and action, to be or not to be, in that sense. Death is unknowable, question, the questioning of the worth of pain and struggles, and death as a form of release. And some of the influences we'll see once we read the soliloquy is um, Ophelia, Hamlet's mother Gertrude, unjust death of his father, Claudius's corruption, and conflicted action. So now if you guys pick up your iPads and find the Shakespeare app. <laughs> and just click Hamlet. And if you go to the top where there's like the lines and the dots, like bullet points, just click Act 3, Scene 1 and scroll down until you see Hamlet's large speaking part. Act 3, scene 1. Act 3, scene 1. Has everyone gotten there? Okay, so follow along while I read it aloud. <laughs> to be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer, the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. So your first page of the handout that I gave you is the whole soliloquy in modern language. And you guys can all feel free to read that to yourselves quickly, so it'll be a little bit easier to discuss. The modern interpretation help rather than just reading the Shakespearean? Yes. Why do you guys think that is? It's not Alex. I don't know any of those words. Exactly. He uses very different language than what we speak today. Okay, so now using the Shakespearean version though to help with um, like finding actual textual ed evidence, can anyone pick out um, where he mentions like an uncertainty of life? Exactly. So what is Hamlet contemplating throughout the soliloquy? Hillary? Life or death. Exactly. It can also be seen as contemplation on whether or not he should take revenge on Claudius or not, in some instances. So according to Hamlet, why isn't death preferable? This is going back to kind of what we said about the sleeping. Problem. 
says about Bob, oh, but there's the catch. In the best sleep, who knows what kind of dreams might come. It's not referable because, like, you're always constantly worrying and not 100% sure of what life's going to bring you. Exactly. And death is kind of the same way. It's mysterious and it's unknown. So, does Hamlet make a decision? Why or why not? I would say no, because it kind of interrupts what I was thinking about all this. Now, we're going to compare two performances of the soliloquy, and kind of when we watch the first one, take notes on kind of what the setting is like, what you think about Hamlet, and how he's portraying the soliloquy that we talked about, and the themes that we talked about. And then I'll, we'll show a second video, and we're going to kind of compare them. To die. being performed help your understanding? Why or why not? Yeah. They kind of showed like the passion that they're trying to portray. In the first video, I like how when he gets to, but there's the rub, he kind of like has a moment of realization like, but there's the issue. And I, I think that kind of clarifies like his realization of, but that's the real problem is I don't know what's going to happen. After. Which version of Hamlet did you prefer and why? The first one or the second? Would be the first one, it seems Just to close up today's lesson, if everyone could just for a ticket out the door, um, write one sentence reflection on what you think of the to be or not to be soliloquy. I think it is a statement of confusion. The video showed me it is to be filled with passion. <laughs>